part 96 of C Sharp tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss resolving a deadlock in a multi-threaded program. This is continuation to part 95, so please watch part 95 before proceeding. There are several techniques to avoid and resolve deadlocks. For example, acquiring locks in a specific defined order, using mutex class, or monitor.tryenter method. In this video, we'll discuss acquiring locks in a specific defined order to resolve a deadlock. We'll be working with the same example that we worked with in the previous session. This is the program that we worked with in the previous session. At the moment, this program is deadlocked. First, let's try and understand why there is a deadlock situation. Now, for thread 1, the from account is account A and to account is account B. And for thread 2, from account is account B and to account is account A. And look at this code within the transfer method. We are first locking the from account. So when thread 1 comes in, thread 1 is going to lock the from account. And the from account for thread 1 is account A. So thread 1 has locked account A. And then thread 1 goes into sleep. And at the same time, you know, we have thread 2 already started. And for thread 2, from account is account B. So we are locking account B for thread 2. So at the moment, thread 1 locked account A, thread 2 locked account B. And then when thread 1 you know, comes out of sleep, it tries to acquire lock on account B, which thread 1 has already locked. Similarly, when thread 2 comes out of sleep, it tries to acquire a lock on account A, which thread 1 has already locked. So both of these threads are waiting for each other to release their respective locks, but that would never happen. And that's why we have a deadlock situation. So how are we going to resolve this deadlock? By defining a specific order in which the locks can be acquired. And that's what the code on the right hand side is doing. So the transfer method is going to change to what we see on the right hand side here. So instead of hard coding the from account to account like this, what we are doing is we are creating two reference variables of type object. And then we are saying, OK, if the from account dot ID is less than to account dot ID, then lock one is going to be from account, lock two is going to be to account. If that condition is not true, then lock one is going to be to account and lock two is going to be from account. And then we have removed that hard coding here. Notice that we are saying lock, lock one and lock, lock two. So the account IDs are going to determine, you know, in what order we acquire locks. So let's see how this is going to resolve the deadlock. So let's flip to Visual Studio. And to speed things up, I have already typed the code that you have seen on the slide. So let's copy this. And then from the slides, I have removed the console.writeLine statements to keep it simple. So let's paste that code right here. OK, it's the same code that we have discussed on the slide. And we also need to remove the hard coding here. So instead of explicitly saying from account, Let's pass lock one there, and let's pass lock two here. Now, since we have removed the hard coding, you know, from here and here, we also need to remove it from here as well. Otherwise, we'll have inconsistent output. So, we are now having lock. So we are, you know, whatever thread comes in, that thread is trying to acquire a lock on the object um, that is being referenced by this lock one. So. We know lock1 is of type account, so let's typecast it of type to type account, and then retrieve its ID. So let's copy that piece of code. And here we are saying thread, whatever thread acquired lock on, you know, once the code enters this block, then it means it has that particular thread has acquired lock on the object being referenced by this lock object. OK, and uh, here, you know, we are trying to acquire a lock on an object that is being referenced by this reference variable. So here, instead of saying to account, we will say, you know, lock to typecast it of to of type account and then retrieve the ID out of it. And similarly, once, you know, the thread enters this block, it means it has acquired a lock on the object that is being referenced by lock to reference variable. So let's get rid of this code right here. And then let's actually copy this piece of code and paste it here. So console.writeline, whatever thread acquired lock on, 
log2. Okay, and then let's also have a console.writeLine statement here. So what is this going to do? This console.writeLine statement is going to tell us, you know, whatever thread transferred the amount from the from account to the to account. Okay, because we are withdrawing the money from from account and tra depositing it within the to account. All right. With this change, let's go ahead and run this. Okay, there are builders. Let's see what are they. Okay, unable to copy the file. That could possibly be because the program is in a deadlock. So let's close that and let's run it once again. Okay, look at that. Main started. Thread one trying to acquire lock on 101. And thread one acquired lock on 101. Thread one is suspended for one second and at the same time, Thread 2, look at that, it is also trying to acquire lock on 101, which Thread 1 has already acquired. So Thread 2 at the moment is going to be blocked because Thread 1 has acquired lock on 101 object. So Thread 2 can't acquire it at the same time. So Thread 1, while Thread 2 is waiting to acquire a lock on 101, Thread 1 you know, came back from sleep and then trying to acquire lock on 102. Now thread 2 has not acquired any lock on 102. So thread 1 is going to acquire lock on 102. And then thread 1 transferred 1000 from 101 to 102. So that's what we have specified. So for thread 1, so within our main method, so thread 1 we are saying transfer 1000 from 101 account to 102 account okay and that's shown here and once that is done what's going to happen thread 1 is going to release locks on 101 and 102 as a result thread 2 will acquire so thread 2 has been waiting to acquire lock on 101 once thread 1 has released the lock on 101 object thread 2 is going to acquire the lock on 101 and it goes into sleep for a second then it comes back into action tries to acquire lock on 102 object it acquires the lock and then transfers 2000 from 102 to uh, 101. Notice the order in which the locks are acquired by these threads. Thread 1 acquired lock first on 101 and then on 102. Similarly, thread 2 first acquired, look at that, thread 2 trying to acquire lock on 101. So thread 2 also acquired locks in the same order from 101 account first and then on 102 account next. So when we define a specific order to acquire locks, then you know the possibility of having deadlocks is reduced. All right. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.